No one knows better than 60 Minutes that there's been a boom in television comedy. Look into this a bit further though and you find that those making us laugh loudest and longest are often the women. Now we should point out that these funny girls get pretty raunchy, but the audience loves them just the same. So we thought you'd like to meet some of the stars of shows like The Big Gig, Fast Forward and The Comedy Company. We scored two out of three. The Comedy Company said thanks, but no thanks. We've come up with Chenille's patented shoulder implant. Shoulder implants? How is it all done? Well, there are several methods. The simplest involves rearranging Olassie's bits. No one gets more laughs out of Channel 7's fast forward comedy show than the gang who make it. Yes, we found them. <laughs> you might know her as Chenille, a real heavy in the beauty and fashion industries. But underneath all that makeup and shoulder padding is 28-year-old Magda Zubinsky. I like Chenille because she's just so piss elegant and bitchy and such a tyrant. Well, there's of course the Princess Stephanie shoulder look. That's a very big job, that one though, involving 14 microsurgeons, three anaesthetists, and two truckloads of pioneer concrete. She we is a fascist, and that sort of fascist of the body, Chenille. I suppose, in a way, it's because we're going for cheap laughs with that. Not love cheap laughs. <laughs> and, for example, we can correct an unsightly, drooping, sagging pair of boobs into a smart set of shoulder pads <laughs> with, with our boo-boo rectification technique. Boo-boo <laughs> rectification? Chenille's sidekick, Janelle, is played by Mark Downey. We go into hysterics Magda, when Magda and I are filming. We just cannot look at each other without laughing. Yes, we simply transfer... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Meanwhile, over at the ABC, live every Tuesday night, there's the big gig. Wendy Harmer is one of Australia's best-known comedians. She's also the first woman to host a national comedy show. My mother used to say to me, you know, look at my kitchen floor, you can eat your dinner off that. I said, you can eat your dinner off my kitchen floor. There's plenty of good stuff down there. I'm a really great admirer of all the other women on TV who are terrific character actresses who do really wonderful characters, but I don't think that's my forte. I don't think I'm as good at that. I think I'm better as me, standing up and um, being opinionated and loud. <laughs> we listen to Sting who says, if you love somebody, set them free. Bullshit. <laughs> what I think we should do is get Clint Eastwood back into relationships. We should go round there with the 44 Magnum and go, you, the bitch, on the floor. Poom, poom. <laughs> You'd feel better about it. He wouldn't know I'd hit him. Who gives a stuff what she thinks? Good evening. Here is a news update. Prominent West Australian bouncer, Mr Alan Bond, has denied allegations that he's threatened to bring down the Australian government by paying tax. A very different ABC newsreader, the big gigs, Veronica Glenn Huntley. She's played by Jean Kitson. Next thing you know, he'll start paying off people's mortgages, complained Treasurer Keating. This will ruin the banks and I'll have no one to take me out to lunch. <laughs> Typical. After all Mr Bond has done for the little people, even putting himself into debt. It's great looking straight down the barrel of the camera and, you know, just really get it. And just being able to lift an eyebrow, because... curl it, a lip. Yeah, or curl a lip or... Mm, yeah. <laughs> it's great. Those sort of subtleties are fantastic. I mean, it's so terribly unfair. Without our entrepreneurs, we'd still be sitting down in Sydney Cove, living off clams and waiting for the boat home. <coughs> Sorry. Now, why women in particular? Why are they the real popular ones? Well, um, I think uh, that they have started writing their own material um, and uh, they're a bit of a new phenomenon. Hi, um, my name's Rhonda and um, I'm a professional victim. And um, if you're gay or you're an alcoholic who likes beating up women or maybe, you know, a tortured artist with a sexual problem or just a guy who doesn't want to make a commitment, I'd really like to meet you and fall in love with you and waste another couple of years of my life. <laughs> I think that women tend to 
often get into the heart of things. They like to talk about sex and love and relationships and you know that kind of human foibles. And um, I think that that's probably a new way of looking at things. It isn't all political or all you know cynical. There's a a real warmth there. And I think that that's why people like the women. Now that is a serious handlebar moustache. <laughs> now that is very serious. Do you wax that? I use freeze grease on my hair. What do you use on yours? Everybody has to start somewhere. And Lily Bragg is doing her apprenticeship at Melbourne's Le Joke nightclub. On the same stage where it all started for Wendy Harmer just six years ago. You're not smiling. You're very serious. When she ran the risk of not being funny and a gauntlet of hecklers. How bad have the hecklers got over the years? Oh, well, I, I have been reduced to tears, you have know. You? Yeah, yeah, a few times. Uh, <clears throat> men like to, when a woman's on stage, they like to attack a woman on her sexual attractiveness. You know, they like to say, oh, I wouldn't go to bed with you if you're the last woman on earth or you're ugly or you're unattractive or, you know, all that kind of thing. Well, show me your whatever. Yeah, show, you, show us your tits, you know. I've developed a few comebacks for that. Um, um, you can always tell the bottle-fed boys, never mind, dear, you might get a girlfriend one day, she might show you hers. <laughs> I mean, 60 minutes of dying for a goddamn heckler. They really are. But we've got it's a pretty a tame good. audience tonight, but it can get so rough that stand-up comedians call it combat comedy. It is a war zone out there and even the language is like that. I mean you either come back and you go, you know, how'd you go? I killed him tonight. I killed him. Yeah. Or you, they say, how'd you go? I died. Absolutely died. Died. <laughs> so the language is exactly the same. You gotta gird your loins and go in there and fight them. <laughs> it's a bit like crowd control sometimes I think. You know? <laughs> right. but... Now I've got a real exclusive, a real hoity-toity of an interview in the history of the things and it's, of course it's with the Marrickville Mola, that's right, Jeff French. Hi Jeff, so you're a boxer. That's an amazing coincidence because we used to have a boxer called Muffins. Actually he was a boxer Sam Boyd Cross. <laughs> After years of toughing it out on the club circuit, it's comedians like Magda Zubinsky who have suddenly found themselves overnight successes on television. And they earn it six and seven days a week, not only starring in, but writing a lot of their own material. Thanks, the lovely Dirk. Uh, and I hope you had a real hoot of a time on bail. Uh, holiday. Uh, I've got a bit of a soft spot for the old pixie, I think. The background of the character is that she's, you know, comes from a really wealthy sort of media magnate kind of a family. And, um, you know, was off jaunting around Europe with 25 of her closest friends um, and was looking for a hobby and her father suggested she be in charge of network sport. How many times would you say that you have been punched in the ring? <laughs> <laughs> um, not too many times, although my last opponent uh, punched me low a couple of times. Oh, that must be really painful. <laughs> right. And what about, is that as painful as being clinched in the ring? Or... <laughs> While fast forward gets some of its laughs below the belt, it's a very different style of humour over at Auntie ABC. But for all those in the studio tonight, and let's see little sad faces, and all those at home who are nursing a broken heart, take solace. Because statistics show that at any time, there are at least 100,000 people on the roads full of speed and cheap alcohol <laughs> driving to their ex's place to demand, what the bloody hell's going on? You might think this is just another harmless sketch on relationships. But for Wendy Harmer, it's a form of therapy. That's what domestic science should have been about. It should have been about domestics. <laughs> if I've had um, a relationship breakup or something like that, I'll usually get a very funny routine out of it because even while I'm in tears, I'm seeing the funny side of it. I'm watching me crying and thinking, isn't this hilarious? It's like a bad B-grade movie. <laughs> Last week, you'll remember, I spoke with a man whose condition has the medical world baffled. A man she certainly sounds like Yana Vent, and with the right touches, she even looks a little like Yana. <laughs> Mark Downey is more than just an impersonator. She comes close to being an imposter. Hello, and thanks for joining us on The Current Affair tonight. 
I'm speaking with a man who claims or alleges to be Mike Munro, journalist from 60 Minutes. You are Mike Munro? Yes, I am, Yana. You may then, in fact, be able to answer a few questions for me. Sure. Are they missing me at 60 Minutes? <laughs> yes, we are. Yana, I hope you don't mind me asking, but how do you cope with impersonators, those awful impersonators who make fun of you? Well, quite frankly, they don't bother me at all. Um, as long as they're pretty darn good. And are they? I think they're superb. Is she superb? Yeah, frankly, they don't bother me at all if they're pretty darn good, and she's pretty darn good. Something else that's fascinated me. Who's using my coffee cup, the one with the daisies and the little pussycats on it? Well, Richard Carlton's using that one. Richard Carlton. And he won't allow any. I'm almost flattered by the fact that she's bothered to uh, look at what I do so closely to imitate it. Just how close does she come, do you think, with the hand on the cheek and the drawl and the tilted head? Yes. I mean, it's all... Well, you know, you could really become almost, you could go crazy if you watched her too much because you then become conscious of the fact, I'm not so conscious of the fact that I tilt my head, but it's obvious that I do. And when I'm sitting there watching, I'm obviously tilting my head. So it is something, it is one of my mannerisms. Uh, she's, she's got it down, down to a T. I mean, I may stop doing all those things. I may become paranoid as a result of this. <laughs> People are surprised to know that I didn't study her at all to get the voice. It was just something that I stumbled across one day. I didn't sort of um, set out to impersonate Yana. It was just there. Well, after that interview, Marge, you received a flood of response. Yes, that's right, Yana. My phone has not stopped ringing. Blokes like Samantha and Val are here. I reckon they were turning into girls. But before I go on, might I say that that is a lovely dress you're wearing, Yana. Thanks, Marge. Can I start with you, Val, but... What would you give her out of 10? As as an overall impersonation, I'd give her a good solid eight and a half. Now I know your face, don't I? <laughs> Do you know this guy? <laughs> if you want to watch Wendy Hum a close up, then you've got to take your chances. This is Mike Munro, ladies and gentlemen. He's from 60 Minutes. And he's here at a comedy show because comedy shows win all the ratings and he's hoping for a bit of the action, aren't you, Mike? <laughs> Now, let's hear about you and commitment. Are you married? Yes, very happily. Oh, you suck. <laughs> he would say that, wouldn't he? How long Do you think you're funny? Um, um, in, uh, um, I think I'm, I think I've probably got front and I've got a brain and somehow I turn that to my advantage, whether I'm naturally funny. No, I don't think so. I see really, really funny people. I think, oh, I wish I could be funny like that. Let me demonstrate to you the safety features of the Hercules transport. <laughs> it shouldn't take too long because, quite frankly, there aren't too many of them. <laughs> Please note the location of the exit doors. There is one <laughs> of them. <coughs> In the event of an emergency, the entire arse end of the plane will descend. <laughs> Those of you wandering about looking for the kerosene tins which constitute the toilet facilities will be sucked into the slipstream. <laughs> the rest of you will make way for the Minister of Defence, Mr. Beasley. <laughs> Mr. Beasley will form a large meteoric crater in prime grazing land and will become a tourist attraction. The big gig really hits people over the heads with certain issues. Yes, it can. Yes, yeah. which, which I love. That sort of black comedy I love. A bit biting and that where people are laughing in spite of themselves or they're laughing because it's horrific and oh no don't talk about safety features on airplanes please but let me point out right from the start that there are many many pilots who are warm caring wonderful and essentially Christian human beings who do not <coughs> treat flight attendants as personalized vending machines <laughs> with nice tits <laughs> One day I hope to meet one of them. They don't see their success as a passing phase, but rather as women finally carving out their own niche in Australian comedy. Are you trained in performing sex change operations? Oh, my wordy lordy, no. <laughs> but I have neutered my cat. As Wendy Harmer says, we funny women have been around for a long time. 
We've just been waiting for a break in the conversation. I really believe if you're in the middle of a breakup, you know, don't go crazy, don't be angry. Take the honourable way out of it, right? Be honourable. Ring up the new happy couple and tell them how pleased you are for them. 4 a.m. is a good time. <laughs> At 10 minute intervals. Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on ninenow.com.au and the Nine Now app.